and put his interest above our own. I mean, one day you will just realize that God has already helped you with what you need. Cannot, I mean, that, God cannot be undone in, in, in his universe. <coughs> Another of our strength is time. Have the proper attitude of time. We do not own our time. We merely manage it. We have 24 hours a day. We allocate eight hours for sleeping, so there's 16 hours left. We dedicate another eight hours for our work, so there's eight hours left. How do we manage those eight hours that is left? We need to spend time with our families, our spouses and our children. Generous amount of time for that. Another generous time for the Lord. So we need to manage it the way the Lord wanted us to manage it. We need to be generous with our time. Use it not just for ourselves, but for others. Um, today, for example, <clears throat> it was starting to rain when we, we uh, left High Point, but I thought it was a beautiful day to be mowing the yard and, and have some beer probably in the backyard and drink something. But I'm here, I'm spending my time here. Um, these are the things that God is calling us to be generous. Um, Art has already called me or talked to me several weeks ago to be here this day. So no matter how good the day is in High Point, I'm here. So I'm serving the Lord. I'm not glorifying myself, I'm just saying an example. <laughs> Seek God's direction as to how you should spend your time. Examine what you do with your free time. Some of us can quickly spend our free time with movies, reading books, or sleeping, but maybe we can spend a little bit of that time for the Lord. We need to read the Bible, probably pray the rosary, or just spend a quiet moment with him. Just sit in the backyard, just think of the good things that the Lord has given us. That's good enough. Another way of spending our time is to volunteer to do Christian service. Yesterday I saw a group of uh, Filipinos in, in Greensboro. They were packing relief goods for the Philippines. They packed about 23 Balikbayan boxes to be sent to the Philippines. And those were donated from people all over Greensboro and High Point. So they spent their afternoon packing those goods, and there was this guy from Virginia Beach who picked up their boxes for free to be sent back home. So those are a good way of spending our time, spending the money, because that guy will have to spend or pay for the money for the container to be shipped back to the Philippines. So that's a good way of exercising good attitude towards money and time. So, we have learned how to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. Okay? We need to develop a personal relationship with Him as His sons and daughters. This is with regards to loving him with all the heart. We need to spend regular time with him in prayer and scripture reading. To love him with all our mind, we need to keep our minds clean and holy. We need to preoccupy our minds with all the things of God, preserving it from negative thoughts and unholy influences. With regards to strength, we need to develop proper attitude toward money act according to God's interest through alms giving and tithing and seek God's guidance as to how we spend our free time. So if we only think about this, it may seem so difficult, but little by little, we will be able to do it. Loving God is a very high ideal. God himself is perfect. So anything that he asks of us 
is of a very high level, very high idea. But Jesus himself showed us the way. He spent his life here, he died for us, he showed us the way. And he is our model in loving God. He was dedicated to accomplishing his mission, Jesus was. In John chapter 4, verse 34, and Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. That is his commitment. He was obedient even unto death. In Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. That is how obedient he was. He was constantly seeking the Father's will. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Even Jesus himself spent a great deal of time with the Lord. How much more for us? How much more for us? So loving God is a very high idea that Jesus is our model loving God. Jesus puts God, God's will above his own. He was obedient unto death. He constantly sought the Father's will. So the model is, is just be obedient to God's, God's will. Well, um, God is leading us in our daily life. We should be open to his leading. And secondly, to be guided, we need to spend a lot of time with him. In conclusion, loving God is not as vague and impractical as we might think. Rather, it involves specific practical actions and decisions and commitments. But we cannot do it merely by deciding to do it. What will make it possible is the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, Loving God can seem too overwhelming. Merely deciding to do it, to do so, is not enough. The power of the Holy Spirit will make it possible for us. Um, God is not really that unreachable. Anywhere we can keep a quiet moment from Him. As my father said before, um, when, we, when we asked Him to join us in prayer, He said, yeah, I will join you later. Anyway, anywhere, I can be with the Lord. I can pray for Him. Anywhere. And, I, and that's true. Anywhere. Anywhere, anytime. Wherever you are. Wherever we are. His presence is with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that includes the uh, first and uh, the fifth law. Do we have some break? <laughs> <laughs>